Hi, this is Exploring with Emma Stu. And today we are here at Hornchurch Country Park on the outskirts of London, which today is enjoyed by families, dog walkers, fishermen, yeah. and just people looking for a nice day out um, on the outskirts of London. <laughs> but once it was actually the area of one of Great Britain's most important military airfields. Today, we're gonna to take you for a little look around RAF Hornchurch. So there was an airfield first laid out here, in fact, as early as 1915, on an area here known as Sutton Farm. It was one of a number of airfields built to defend London and the Thames from the growing threat from German airships during World War I. Then after World War I, the airfield was decommissioned and most of the buildings were demolished and the land was yet again turned back to agriculture and farming. That was until the early 1920s when the area was again chosen for the site of an airfield, but this time a much larger airfield that went on to be known as RAF Hornchurch. This was completed in 1928 and played a really important part during World War II, including during the Battle of Britain and the evacuation from Dunkirk. So Emma, that was uh a nice little bit of information that you just gave us. Just a very, very brief bit of history because yeah. we don't want to go on and on about it. No. Um, there's a, a little bit more history about this place. Basically, yeah. after the Second World War, uh, it wasn't needed anymore. And they used it for a bit of a gravel quarry, so I hear. Which, uh, a tip. Yeah. That's which where was, most yeah. places around they here were used They then filled it up with landfill, again, which was yeah. very common. But I have heard um, what we've been reading and researching. That there are some little bits around here. Is that there right? There are, because... Um, because after they finished with the tip, as always, they, they covered it up and turned it into a country park, which again, very common around this yeah. area, but unfortunately it did demolish most of the buildings, the hangars, anything overly substantial did in fact yeah. get demolished. But yes, there, there are, are some bits. a few really interesting little bits, if you know where to That's look. That's it. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a little hunt around and we'll see you at our first hunt, I suppose. Yep, our, so. first, uh, our first place. Let's go. Let's go and look. The first World War II feature you'll actually discover when you first reach the car park because in fact the car park is uh, one of the original dispersal sites for the bombers and um, it's basically where the aircrafts would have parked and to be protected from bombs and all of this concrete here actually belonged to that dispersal site but there's something even more interesting just to the edge of the site. And just to the edge of the dispersal site here, we've actually got two World War II air raid shelters. Um, unfortunately, we can't get in them because they've been completely filled with concrete, I suppose, to prevent vandalism and uh, the such. But um, they're here just at the edge of the car park. Uh, maybe we'll see if we can find the other one. And just behind me, amongst all these parked vehicles, we've actually got another entrance to one of those air raid shellers. <sighs> right, so we're taking you on a little bit of an explore now to look for these remains, many of which are hidden and a few apparently are quite obvious. And yeah. one which we've just passed by, which was right at the edge of the park there, um, was something that we weren't expecting to find, were we? No, no, not at all. <laughs> um, according to the notice board there, they're not too sure whether it could have been a barrage balloon, um, sort of place where they used to sort of tie the barrage balloons yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> or it might be a both scum. It they could don't be, know. yeah. Anti-aircraft, all that. They're not completely sure, but we thought we'd put a little bit of a scan in. We didn't want to film it because it was absolutely real with children. Yeah, and obviously <laughs> we don't do that. No. <laughs> but at the moment we're walking through the woods because this was in fact the site of a light anti-aircraft gun. There was a few around here. We believe it's probably gone, but we thought we'd have a little look anyway. But we do know there's definitely something to show you down here. Now we believe we are actually slap bang in the middle of where that light anti-aircraft gun used to be and although like I said it's been demolished we keep coming across pieces of large chunks of concrete sort of like this one here and um, there's very little reason as to why there would be concrete in the middle of the woods here so I think it's pretty much a dead cert that this is the area and this is probably a few remains. Now most airfields would have had a defensive perimeter built all along them 
And uh, these would have been littered with pillboxes, maybe anti-tank blocks, all different sorts of defensive structures. And we've actually got one of those just behind us that we're going to take you for a little look at. So uh, thank you very much, Emma, for actually introducing us to this part of the pillbox. <laughs> yeah, one of um, many defences built around the airfield. Um. And what's actually really interesting about this one is that you can actually get in it, and I think it's actually looked after. Uh, there's a little bit of graffiti on it, as usual, but uh, let's go have a look, shall we? So here we have a very standard Type 22 pillbox. There's thousands of them still around the country, and well, tens of thousands of them were actually built back in the day. This one's very stereotypical. We've got the loopholes where they would have fired out of if the airfield was uh, under any sort of threat of invasion, which um, ground-wide, I don't think it was. <laughs> and they've also got the uh, ricochet walls, which, uh, well, basically, they were to help uh, any sort of ricochet of bullets from firing all over the place and injuring everybody inside. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much a Type 22 pillbox, you know, solid concrete, they're all pretty much the same. But uh, anyway, let's uh, get outside, have a little look at the outside of it before we find Stu. Right, and so the on the outside, of course, it just looks like a big hexagonal bunker. But um, back in the day, this actually would have been painted with camouflage paint. They're often camouflaged. Um, this one, we do know, would have definitely have had some of that paint on. Unfortunately, it's all gone today, as well as the great big reinforced doors that would have been here and uh, any other sort of metal work, unfortunately, appears to have been removed, which is often the case. But anyway, there's a few more defences around the airfield, so let's find Stu and have a look. So Emma's just turned up and we've just uh, found something really quite interesting, haven't we? Well, we um, think it looks interesting. I'm just going to turn the camera around. It's a lot easier just to show you and talk about it. But it does look like gullies of some sort, but it's definitely war, isn't it? Well, this is very much the same sort of concrete that we see all, all time, over World yeah. War II places. It's got these sort of strange metal things over here. Um, I don't know if it's a gully for whether it's to do with um, sort of sewage or water or whether it, don't know what it is. These could even be sort of electrical gullies but there's no record of there actually being anything situated in this place on any sort of records that no, i found at all. so We're trying to find it aren't we if anybody knows what this is please please let us know we've never seen anything like it before no that's it now one of the reasons that we were quite excited to come to RAF Horned Church is because they've actually got quite a unique form of fortification here and we don't see them really anywhere around the country and here in Hornchurch there's actually quite a few so we're going to take you for a little look at these rather exciting fortifications and here we have it these are an incredibly rare field fortification they're actually known as a tret turret the likeness is you may not have ever seen one before because there's hardly any about and in RAF Hornchurch, we've actually got several of them and we're really excited to actually finally take a look at them. Now these were built between 1940 and 1941 and they were initially just a small circular pillbox uh, set above a pit. And we've actually got a better condition one here. So we're gonna take you for a little explore and share with you some of the information that we know about them. So thank you very much, Emma, for that uh, lovely little bit of information as usual. We've got plenty more. Yeah, we have. Uh, but this is going to be a little bit of a Q&A time now, because I need to ask some questions. And I'm quite interested to know, um, the turret, what, did it move? The turret, it... yes. Well, the turret was, they were revolving turrets. And uh, you just turn me around. We'll take you for a very, very quick look at what we can see of this turret. This one is in exceptionally good condition. My shadow's right in there. There you go. Unfortunately, it's time of the year, we're gonna get shadowed. But um, this, met, met, uh, this concrete turret here would have revolved around uh, basically a metal ring, sort of like ball bearings, I suppose, which would have given the one man that would have been in there a 360 to five degree field of view, basically. Yeah. So uh, the initial idea was really quite good. Unfortunately, um, in reality, 
They weren't that good. No, um, I heard they were vulnerable to grenades, bullets, everything that could be they chucked at them. They certainly were. Um, these, you know, we'll talk about the advantages. You know, they were relatively cheap to make. They were prefabricated, so they could just be brought on and plonked wherever you wanted them. They only needed one person. So again, that's probably an advantage. Um, but when it came to disadvantages, well, you can imagine if you were inside this, and I shall just demonstrate that for you. If you're inside this and you're here with your little sort of bream gun or your or whatever you would have had, you're quite vulnerable, of course, to any sort of grenades that might fall on your head. So um, not exactly the best design. If you decided to bail out and give up because you were being bombarded, again, there's only one way out. The likeness is you're going to fight to the death if you're in one of these. Um, they, they weren't bulletproof, so they weren't strong. Um, really, there wasn't very many many advantages to them. So. Not many were made, and that's why they're quite rare. So we can basically say, <laughs> on a nutshell, literally in a nutshell, that <laughs> they were rubbish. They were a bad design. Um, yeah. That's why they were. They were only basically tested here, maybe, and a, a few other places. There's a couple of locations around the country with them. Somewhere in Norfolk, I do believe, has two. I think records show that they only ever made thirty. Um, and they were eighteen pound ago weren't there 18 the price was 18 pound which is the equivalent of a thousand pound to this day's money yeah, is that right they were cheap to make again that's enough another advantage of them but um but no like i said there was only really a handful of them ever recorded to have actually been situated around the country so but you know they're so rare you know they're quite interesting to look at because we've never seen one before no it's actually quite interesting and it is here at the the young church site so it's yeah. you know come and have a look um they're really interesting i think they're interesting um, but we have got other places to have a look. Um, we've got a few more of these scattered around the site. They, a few years ago, they actually discovered, I think, another two or three another of them. Three. We've got two here. Another two or three waste of money, Yeah, basically. Um, as well as a few pillboxes that are scattered around. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to go and have a little look and see if we can find those. OK, let's go, Emma. And so, just following the perimeter track round the outside of the airfield um, and the line of defence, we found yet another one of those defences. And here we have... Yet another pillbox. This is yet another type of 22 pillbox. Um, it feels much smaller than the last one we went in. Um, but other than that, I would say it is pretty much identical with a reinforced concrete, the ricochet wall, and it's surrounded by loopholes uh, on all sides, giving a sort of 360 degree field of uh, vision if need be. Uh, it is quite clean, unsurprisingly. Um, but I think that's pretty much all we can tell you about this one. Uh, we may find some more like this and we'll give you a quick look if we do. So here I'm standing outside the pillbox, Emma's just coming out. Yeah. Uh, that was a nice little bit of introduction. Again, it's the same pillboxes you've seen them on our channel loads and loads of times. But that one was actually really like sort of tight squeeze. I couldn't really get it round is. that. It was more difficult to get into. But again, it's really clean, and normally when we go to pillboxes or wall structures on the Dirty. outskirts of London particularly, they're Smelly. covered in graffiti, uh, rather undesirable things inside them. So it was quite nice actually, again, to see one um, quite accessible to the public That's in it. such a clean condition. Um, but obviously we'd, this place is just covered with pillboxes and Ted Turrents all over the place. Um, there's not loads to see. We're trying to show as much as we possibly can, can't yeah. we? But you know, we've got a few other things to show you, so uh, let's go and find let's them. Let's go and have a little bit of an explore and see if we can find some things that aren't so well known hidden in the bushes. A bit disappointed. Um, the overgrowth's way too much. We can't find the Trek tyres anywhere. Uh, me and Emma's looking. She's actually looking at the moment, but I can see her coming back now. Um, she's coming through. Yeah, yeah, I had some locations for some rather newly rediscovered Trek turrets in this undergrowth, but yes. this time of the year, yeah, we yeah, couldn't find them. Happening. But we, I am going to come back in the future because there it. is at least two or three more. Yeah. Um, and I can't leave any stone unturned Turned, if you no. know what I'm like. <laughs> no, but um, as I was walking down the path while Emma was in the undergrowth, I have come across something. I started reading it, um, not overly convinced that it's a Battle HQ. My experience, Emma's experience, we've never seen anything like this before, but it, it does say on the board, speculation. Yeah. And that's what makes me even go, uh, no. I just think it's a, a very, very cool pillbox, basically. That's but I'm it. going to hand you over to Emma now, and uh, she'll go on about it with you and sort of have a little bit more of experience. So, yeah, oh, have a talk. Thank you very much for putting me on the spot. Of course, it's all speculation, so I don't know either, really. But here we have, just to my left here, 
what appears to be a pillbox. And uh, I think most people assume it is just a pillbox. Yeah. Now, now, how this one differs to the others that we've looked at is the fact that it doesn't actually have any obvious entrance. No, I mean, I've actually looked around. You can see there's other people, obviously, in the park. <laughs> it's a country but park, yeah. It's a country park. Yeah. But as you can probably see, there is no entrance. It's, it's quite amazing, really. But they are saying this is two-storey. Yes. Now, supposedly, in 2003, when BBC came along, and I think they're making a documentary for um, something called um, Three Men in a Trench or something like that. Something like I that. I might be wrong. Um, and they actually excavated this, this supposed pillbox. And they discovered that, in fact, it is a two-storey pillbox. Um, through the middle of this, there's an access ladder to another storey, much, much deeper than where I'm stood now. Um, making them think, well, why, why did they do that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to come back into this in a second because this is what my argument is. Now, you've seen us go to Tilbury Fort and not Tilbury Fort, uh, Fort uh, Coas, Coas Fort. And there was a, a big two story pillbox there, which Emma actually squeezed into. Yes. Now, that one was higher off the ground, but that wasn't classed as a Battle HQ. No, that had the that same wasn't. sort of design as this. Yes, that was a, a fire, um, Battle Fire HQ or yeah, something, something very Yeah, something like that, wasn't it? <laughs> And this is what I'm saying. I mean, it, speculation's yeah. great. Now, of course, airfields did have, often have battle, battle HQs. HQs. Not all of them, but some of them they did choose for it. Now, if you wonder what battle HQ is, it's basically if the airfield was put out of action, the main structures. If it was compromised. This is where they would have come, basically, to manage the entire airfield. Now, yeah. they usually consisted of, of quite large semi-sunken bunkers. They did. With maybe four or five different rooms, with telephone rooms, all different types of, of structures and, and things that were needed in it. Yeah. So this, I don't... It's not big enough to, to compensate to for enough, that, no. I don't think. And that's where the problem no. lies. It might be two storeys, but no. I don't see it. But I don't see um, it we'll take all. you for a little look, proper look, and you can tell us what you think. So, so what I'll do is I'll face the camera to Emma now and she'll just <laughs> take you around. Show you what there is. <laughs> so there's not an awful lot of features to see above ground because, of course, what you can see here is probably only about a quarter of what is actually here. Um, but if you just take a little look down here, where I'm stood, you can see that there appears to be a bit of a concrete skirt. Um, there is one, it's difficult to pick up, um, obviously with all the leaves and everything. Um, but this is a, a hexagonal shape, again, it, that's why it makes you think it's probably just a Type 22 pillbox. There doesn't appear to have really been anything much mounted in the middle. Sometimes we do see maybe a hole or something or another in there. You can't see anything. We can just see these, these loopholes and like I said, what appears to be not any access into it. But the understanding is when they did the excavations in 2003, that they actually discovered a tunnel system to get under into it. I guess much, much lower. I'm not even sure whereabouts that would have been. But that's what they discovered and that's what makes them think this isn't just a standard type of pillbox but um, maybe you've got your own theories um, you know we've got ours so interesting anyway to have a look at as usual thank you very much emma really appreciate <laughs> your theory on this very much guesswork that's it so what we're going to do um we're going to be going to have a look for some more stuff but we are going to be wrapping up the video soon there's a few there's only a few more things we can see here but they're so interesting a lot of history Yes, I think. in the middle of a country park. And there's people walking past us all the time all going, the time. oh, what's this? What's, what's that? that? They don't even know that this was an airbase, I think, a lot no, of people. No, so no. One of the most important airbases in this part of the country yeah, as well. So fascinating. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to carry on now and we'll see you on our next part. Now, we've just come across one of the last features we're probably going to show you. And we didn't, in fact, even realise this particular feature was here, which is quite strange because it's really quite significant. So um, I think we're going to turn you around and me and Stu are going to try and depict what it is we're looking at. Wow. Um, this is incredible, actually. This is on no logs. No, this wasn't no actually on my map. We only came across this because we were actually looking for another pillbox, which is supposedly just set behind the car park here. Yeah. When we started finding big lumps of concrete, that didn't look like they came from a pillbox. No, but we was literally, I'll tell you where we were, we were just walking on the public footpath and we see these concrete structures and I went, oh my God, Emma, that looks like a gun battery. Emma went, it's not on any logs. So we've come <laughs> in and discovered this would have had a World War One 
ship battery, a uh, ship battleship. gun, gun, battleship gun. gun. Battleship gun yeah, there is just a very small little plaque that says what this was. Yeah. So again, amazing that it isn't actually on any maps or anything like that. No. But we don't normally come across World War One no. um, gun batteries or emplacements. Not at all. So maybe we'll sort of just take you for a little look at a few of the remaining features. Let's do this. Um, Again, I can't tell you an awful lot about it, but it's it's in a big sort of circle, like you would often see in gun batteries. Um, I assume that a lot of this is now missing. Um, maybe, maybe there were some sort of magazines where the munitions used to be held. Well, I would have thought they would have built them practically the same. I mean, if you look here on this concrete, it is actually like like we said in a circle, mm. and it does have um, where obviously the rail would have been a along here. That maybe it did have some sort of uh, large rail that it would have been out and manoeuvre. That is actually really, really mm. quite cool. I'm guessing maybe it would have been mounted in the middle. Unfortunately, this is obviously very old. So, you know, there's, uh, there's not an awful lot here remaining, but I can only assume maybe hidden in the woods there are, because this is quite a large structure. We don't um, know exactly. It looks what like that it's a collapsed building almost. Maybe this was. Do some you know sort what? Of a... You know what this reminds me of Emma. Mm. Our video that we did with Liam, when it had like a little That's control it. box next to yes, it. Yes, the World War One gun that we did up. Gosh, that was around this part as yeah, well. Yeah, it was. And it had a, a small hut, which was probably some sort of crew shelter, yeah. next to a round gun emplacement. You are right. And yeah. this is very reminiscent of that. And obviously, we're talking about Liam from Beyond the Point with Liam and Joe. So don't forget to check their stuff yes, out, they actually, because they've actually done something here before, haven't they? They have. They've done a video here many years ago. Um, but yeah, this is really quite fascinating. And it was definitely worth having a little poke around behind the car park. Going. That's it. But um, to be quite honest with you, I think we're going to sort of end, maybe end this, this now. This might be the last feature. If we yeah. find something else on the way back to the car, That's it. then we'll give you a look. And what we'll do is we'll put it at the end of all the cinematics and the music and stuff. So you will see that if it is there. So stay tuned on <laughs> that. If we don't, then it will just come to the end in with our little bits at the end. That's so, it. But um, what we'll do is we'll say goodbye to you now. So as from Exploring with Emma and Stu. Here from RAF Hornchurch. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye bye. -bye. bye. end of the video the end 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 <laughs> uh, we have actually found the pillbox it is all shut up we can't get in this one no. but we thought we'd uh, say the last bit that we, we promised yep so I believe this is another type 22 pillbox and um, very much the same as all the others that we found here there was in fact yet another one close by here which we didn't manage to get to because it was quite flooded. Yeah, it was flooded. As well as a few of those tret turrets that are sort of hidden in the young undergrowth. But unfortunately, we've just run out of time, haven't yeah. we? And it is starting to, the sun's starting to go down now. The light's getting a little bit thing. It's, it's been a great day. It has really been a good day down That's here. It. So um, anyway, 
like we said, from Finney's here. He's had well, a good time as well. He's learning had a nice time learning about more. these places. That's but um, this is a country park, so if you're interested in some history or maybe teaching your children a little bit about the history, there's come plenty and of enjoy plaques. It. Yeah, there's plenty of information so that you can read. You don't know how, even have to know anything That's about it. it. So again, one more time, we'll see you again. <laughs> bye bye.